Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we have what I think is probably the exclusive first leak of Intel's upcoming uh, generation of processors. This one being called Infinity Lake and this is a leak and I'll go ahead and leave links in the description down below to this particular leak. But joining me today is my brother uh, and his channel will also be linked down there below. But we're going to be talking about Infinity Lake a little bit because for the first time we are having Core i11 processors processors coming onto this platform. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Very exciting. So here we have, and I'm just going to sort of throw up the slides. There's only four slides that leaked out today. So I'm just going to kind of throw those up on the screen as we talk about them. But obviously we have Core i7, Core i9, and then the Core i11 processors here. That is awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to this. So and you know a little bit more about these leaks than I do because you you saw the source. In fact, the source comes through you a little bit. But actually, yes. Um, are there Core i three or i five processors at all at this point? Uh, there will be, just not right. No details right now. Okay, so so we're gonna have. So I guess we're expanding the the entire series from the i three, i five, um, i seven, i nine, and i eleven can't talk there uh so i'm gonna jump over now and you can kind of follow along on your side aaron but i'm gonna jump yes. over to the node process here and what we're essentially looking at is the 14 nanometer plus 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 architecture here um and, and this is of course a refinement of the 14 plus 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 architecture yep and uh from the charts, it looks like we're looking at very slightly higher performance and very slightly uh, less power used. Okay, so, so kind of what we've been really along the lines of what we've been seeing since 14 plus plus and then 14 plus yeah. plus plus. Okay. Um, it do it is, doesn't seem real exciting, but you know. Yeah, and <laughs> th this kind of seems to me like Intel's continued strategy, and this might have to do with their troubles with 10 nanometer, but they've been kind of going this direction of just refining what they already have perpetually. Uh, so this may be a little bit frustrating to people. The, the Infinity Lake is not uh, what we'd hope for in 10 nanometer and seeing that refinement. But, and I'm going to go ahead and click on along here, we are seeing that we have this new technology being introduced. Oh, called actually, I, actually, I had one more point about uh, the last slide. Sure, go for it. And that is what is not on there is the 10 nanometer process it's not on there at all anymore so uh we'll see what that means so that if is, it means anything at all that is a little interesting and maybe it maybe this is the whole like you know everyone understands that elephants in the room for intel and they're just kind of ignoring it and pretending it's not there altogether probably so the the next slide this third slide that we're seeing here is a new technology and intel is calling this infinity glue um, is this similar to the, um, the, the AMD side of things where, what is it? Um, the, um, uh, infinity fabric. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, is, is this a similar concept? It seems to be the very same exact thing. Okay. So this is kind of like, very slightly different. Really <laughs> what we're seeing here is the, the, the backside of where AMD took, uh, what everyone had known as hyper threading, but can't call it hyper threading and instead Pretty calling much. it simultaneous multi threading, which hyper threading is that. So this is Intel turning this back around and actually uh, taking the same technology from AMD and applying it to their own CPU. Is that what we're seeing? Yep, pretty much. Uh, manufacturing advantages, uh, new technology allows us to manufacture a higher core count CPUs. So yeah, this, this, it looks like it might even be allowing Intel to create more of a modular architecture similar to AMD's uh, CCXs where they can just bolt on more cores when they need them. I mean, that's very much what it seems. Okay, and now the grand reveal here, we're going to move on to the last slide here. This is the lineup that we're seeing of the, the 10th generation Intel Core processors here. Uh, starting at the top here, we have the Core i11 10,999XE with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz, a five gigahertz turbo, and a 40 core count CPU. Oh my that God. That is crazy. Can, I mean, the top end right now is what, 28? Yeah, can we talk about how great this will be for content creators? Oh, this will be fantastic. Be, I mean, how fast will you be able to render stuff with certain um, applications? Obviously, I, I that that's a heck of a question. 
because obviously certain applications don't do well with anything over like six or eight cores, but for things that uh, scale linear linearly right. along with the amount of cores and threads, this will be fantastic. Um, thinking about Alex. things like Blender applications where you are, you know, just rendering with almost perfect scaling. Uh, things like Blender or I, I think you use it more than I do, but Handbrake, I think, scales pretty darn well. Yes, um, it, it seems to. I would love to see the Cinebench score on this. Uh, no doubt. And, and, R15 or R20? Uh, really either. I mean, yeah. I mean, really either. R15 probably doesn't do great with that high of core count because it would be completed so fast. Right. Um, what would be fascinating to me is, and I know in moving right along the sort of listings here, uh, the TDP of 95 watts. It that is, seems odd. It, it, it does seem a little odd. Intel's been it seems, sticking. It seems very Intel. Intel has stuck with the 95 watt TDP for a long time at this point. And at some point, you got to wonder if it's just we're actually trying to create a furnace and pretend that it's not a furnace. Um, I've got to believe this thing could act like a space heater. Like there's no way 95 watt TDP is accurate, right? No way. No way in. Yeah. Uh, do, I, I, do you know, and I, I'm sort of reading through some of those footnotes. Do you know? Oh, well, there it is. Um, I am going to point this out because there's a lot of asterisks there at the bottom that, that are important to note. But I am going to point out that the TDP is observed while the computer is in sleep mode. So that's a really important point uh, when I you're mean, talking about coming up with a TDP rating. Obviously, I mean, obviously, the question is, why would they do that? And the answer has to be that these things are hot. So so if that's a, during sleep mode. So you're not, we're not talking about idle temperatures here. We're like, eh, it's a sleep and running at 50 C. That's fine, right? I wonder what Obviously. kind of I wonder what kind of Tim they're using. Who knows? Um, platform PCIe lanes, 64 for the 10,999 XE. Uh, the i9 10,900K is still stuck on 40 PCIe lanes. So that's actually a little disappointing, to be honest, when you're comparing something like that to Threadripper. Also, I, I'm just now noticing this, but can we talk about how the 10,900K is stuck at 10 cores and 10 threads? Yeah, that's kind of odd. And the thing is, it is very similar to like the 9700K, except obviously with two more cores, but it's going to be a lot more expensive like an, than a 9700K. Uh, also, the 10, the i7 uh, 10,700K is going to be a lot more expensive than the 9700K, even though it's barely an improvement. So, I mean... Oh, my dog just walked in. Apparently, he's <laughs> apparently he's curious about these new processors as well. Obvious, I mean, I would be if I was a dog. So, let's see. Memory support, two channels. Really? Two channels? <laughs> yeah, that seems kind of odd. What? Two channels. Uh, and and we're going to kind of wind it down here, uh, but it is important to uh, uh, point out that the pricing here in USD is the leak has it at $2,604 for the top oh. end. Also, that is the uh, unit price for 1,000 of them. So the actual right, so, so retail it's, price it, will be like twenty seven hundred or so. Right. So so that's with the that's with the insane bulk discount. So unless you're planning on spending a small fortune on these, uh, small. Uh, okay, a large fortune. I mean, yeah, a thousand of them. We're talking about two point six million dollars here. So not so small. So okay, a fortune. You're literally spending a fortune on these. Obviously, folks, this is all bull crap. Um, <laughs> This is, I mean, I've been hiding my, my grin with my hand every now and then here, um, though you may not have seen that part because I covered it up with slides and all that. But obviously, this is our April Fool's joke for the year. Um, Intel did, in fact, not leak or announce any 10th generation Intel products. Um, this is just for the fun of it uh, and poking a little bit of fun at Intel and their current woes at uh, finally figuring out the whole 10 nanometer thing. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it though. Uh, th though I will reiterate the links to the leak 
are down below. Um, I actually may even link these slides so you can take a closer look at them specifically uh, if you're into that sort of thing. But if you like this sort of little prank video, this little sort of little uh, Intel League video, let us know in the comments down below. Let us know if you were fooled whatsoever with this or was your, uh, your bullcrap meter off the chart from the get-go. Let us know all those thoughts down below. Big thanks to go out to my brother for uh, actually putting these slides together. Again, his channel is linked down below as well. Um, you welcome. <laughs> You know, we joke about Core i11, but... Um, <laughs> it might be in the future. But what if? It'll be fun to look back at these in seriousness. It'll be fun to look back at these and see if any any bit of this ends up coming anywhere near true. Like, yep. <laughs> the TDP is where I've got my bets pinned. I bet that <laughs> doesn't go anywhere. Nope. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll leave a few linked videos for my channel for you to watch. And uh, have a safe and happy April Fool's Day.